the United Kingdom, as the previous speakers pointed out, one of the most important parts of the United Kingdom is to have a common market and trade between the different parts. That's where the prosperity, which attracts people to uh, being part of the United Kingdom, comes from. And the withdrawal agreement, in my view, and I've expressed it here many times, undermines the economic integrity of the United Kingdom, as well, of course, undermining the constitutional integrity. Because part of the United Kingdom, as a result of the withdrawal agreement, will now have its laws made in Brussels and not in London or indeed in Belfast. And that's why I believe that this Internal Markets Bill is so important. That first of all, it ensures that standards within the UK internal market are maintained and that each part of the United Kingdom, for maybe very selfish very parochial and even very temporary reasons, may want to make differences in its laws, regulations, standards, and in doing so, damage not only the internal market, but damage their own uh, markets as well. But when it comes to the, uh, the, 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 the controversial clauses of this, um, th this bill, I believe that the Lords have done a great disservice to Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, as someone has already pointed out, they are strong in assertions but very pure in arguments. Because, of course, the withdrawal agreement, while it promises unfettered access, while it promises that Northern Ireland will remain part of the UK customs territory, while it promises that the integrity of the United Kingdom will be maintained, in reality, we will finish up with a plethora of trade barriers. We will we'll finish up in a moment or two. We will finish up with, a, 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 with laws made which are different from the laws in the rest of the United Kingdom. And we will finish up with Northern Ireland being part of the EU single market rather than the UK internal market. And I will give way. Thank, thank you, my honourable friend, for giving way. And in doing so, does this withdrawal? Act has been put forward, or the, uh, the Northern Ireland Protocol that is included within this bill, not send a message to those who are from the unionist community. Your views do not matter, but appease those who are nationalist and republican and are only interested in, in their links with the Irish Republic. And Europe have done us a disservice in not giving us a free access to both the Republic of Ireland and to the UK. And Forget about the links that we have with the United Kingdom. That seems to be the message they're sending out. Well, of course, any agreement which means that laws can no longer be made in the United Kingdom, any agreement which puts economic barriers between ourselves and our main market, is bound to act as a, a change in the position of Northern Ireland, which is totally contrary to the, to the uh, Good Friday Agreement, and uh, which requires consent. But what this bill is seeking to do is, some have argued, it puts a safety net in place. That some of the aspects, and only some of the aspects, I've got to make this very clear, only some of the aspects of the withdrawal agreement which could damage the Northern Ireland economy um, can be countered through the measures in this bill. And that is, by the way, totally in line with the withdrawal agreement itself which allows the UK Government to act unilaterally where there is economic or societal damage done by the withdrawal agreement. Now, the member for Doncaster North said, well, there you are, you've got your assurance in the withdrawal agreement. But all the withdrawal agreement states is that it, the Government will have the right to act unilaterally. It must have the means to act unilaterally. And the provision in the, the, uh, this bill gives it the means to act unilaterally. Ministers, notwithstanding what is in the agreement, can make new regulations, new laws, which protect the Northern Ireland economy and the Northern Ireland market. And that's why it's so essential to have these provisions. What disappoints me? is that we now have the Prime Minister today saying that, by the way, once, the work, once we've got the uh, agreement, a, a negotiated settlement, and the work of the Joint Committee 
then we can withdraw this. I think that fails to, under, to recognize the nature of what we have entered into. Because, of course, the safety net is there, not just for a one-off event. The safety net is there because we, uh, we will be continually walking the withdrawal agreement tightrope. Because Northern Ireland is still going to be subject to the rules of the internal market. Northern Ireland is still going to find itself, and indeed the withdrawal agreement makes it quite clear, that the work of the Joint Committee will go on and on. Because at any stage, EU officials could demand that checks be placed in Northern Ireland, and that UK officials would have to adhere to that. So you, if those demands become unreasonable, then you need a safety net. And if you need a safety net, you don't need it until these negotiations are over. You need it whilst any, any part of the withdrawal agreement and the Northern Ireland Protocol is in place. And therefore, I would like an assurance from the Minister that if the, the Government does intend to withdraw this safety net, if negotiations turn out fine this week, then what protection will there be for Northern Ireland from the depredations of the withdrawal agreement in the future? Because that's important. I believe that this bill is essential. It's the government owes it to Northern Ireland, having signed a disasters agreement this time last year. And if the integrity of the, of the, the UK is to be maintained, then the provisions in this bill, and indeed other provisions, are going to be necessary.